All right, today I want to talk about how to prevent your seedlings from getting too leggy. What do I mean by leggy? Well, think about this word picture. A teenager that grows up, grows a few feet in a few years, and is really tall and skinny before they fill out. Well, that's leggy. And your plants can become leggy too. Here are some leggy tomato plants. These were planted on 213 about a month ago, and they are just flopping over. They're still usable, but they're flopping over, and if I let them go a little longer, they wouldn't be that usable. Now, they were planted on 213, and right next to here are peppers planted on 24. So why do you start seeds indoors? Because some of them take a long time to mature. Peppers need to be started way, way early. Take a look at this pepper again. Look how they're just, some of them are just starting to emerge out of the ground. And these tomatoes started weeks later, and they're already growing too tall. So... What is my remedy to uh, keep my seedlings from getting leggy, too tall and skinny? Well, first of all, I would tell you, don't use domes. Don't put a dome over your trays, because that'll encourage your seedlings to come up really quickly, so quickly. And it's good if you do that, but you'll have to take the, the dome off the second you see the first one or two seedlings, because they'll grow quickly and tall and skinny and fall over right away. In life, the way we grow muscles is we go to the gym or we work and we apply pressure. You pick up weights and you apply pressure and that makes you stronger. It's the same thing with plants. When plants have the pressure of wind and heavy solar sun, which you don't get indoors, by the way, they get uh, sturdy and stocky. And when they grow up without any pressure or without any resistance, they get tall and leggy. So your goal is to make them not get too tall and leggy. I could give you a few principles for doing that. First of all, don't use the domes. And if you do, take it off immediately as soon as the first seedling comes up because it makes them weak. They don't get any pressure in there. So um, the other thing is don't fertilize. Seeds, God has created plants to have a complete uh, starter fertilizer in the seed. You only want these plants indoors for a few weeks. So don't fertilize. That'll make them grow tall and skinny. The goal is to get them from indoors to outdoors pretty quickly. Now, if you go on, the way you can find out just how many weeks you should keep them indoors is to go on your county extension webpage. It'll tell you each plant, the day to seed it inside, and the day to plant it outside. So say, for instance, tomatoes take four to six weeks. So let me show you what I did with these. This particular group, my method is to scatter seeds in a 601, tra a 601 uh, tray, six by six, and I scatter them in there. And they grow up and they grow very quickly so they were getting leggy so what i did is i used a deep cell tray to bury them almost up to their necks here they are and they're doing well so these tall leggy ones last week were put into their roma tomatoes they were put into a deep cell tray up to their necks um Where's the deep cell tray? Don't have it. Okay, well, anyway, you can say it's a really deep tray, and I plant them deep in there. The other thing is, is that's called potting up. So if they get tall and leggy, I pot them up. The next step is to pot it up into a bigger pot. Now, this is for tomatoes, because when I plant my tomato plant, I want my tomato plant to be 10 inches tall and stocky and ready to grow and have flowers on it. By the time I plant this on April 15th, which is the date to plant them down here in North Carolina. So by the time I plant these, so I went from leggy. They were, I mean, I could have got them earlier, I, I, but I took them out. I put some of them in deep cell trays. And then I'm going to take some of these. And I'm going to plant them into pots, like a seven inch deep pot. And then you can keep on potting up in the past i've potted up into like to a one gallon size pot you get a tomato plant this big before you plant it but i don't need it that big so um one method of keeping them from getting leggy is not getting leggy is to keep potting things up and burying them deeper and deeper now tomatoes in particular like that other plants will tolerate it to a point if you're using loose uh potting soil which i do and the other thing is to just to give you a tip when you're planting indoors, you should use sterile potting soil. I use professional sterile potting soil. Uh, the one I'm using now is called Lambert. Another good brand is Sunshine Mix. I know uh, uh, there are other brands too. Uh, Pro Mix is another one. And um, 
it's sterile. What it means is it's got perlite and peat moss based mainly in it. There's no soil in it, it's soil less. And it's organic too. But the other thing you don't want to do is put organic fertilizer. I don't even fertilize hardly anything indoors because you'll create, uh, there won't be any balance of uh, nature for bugs. There won't be any predator insects and you'll get fungus gnats and you'll get aphids and things indoors if you keep on fertilizing everything with um, say uh, outdoor compost or compost tea or organic fertilizer. You don't want to bring organic fertilizer in your house. In the past I had a greenhouse and uh, a few years ago and I would grow in the greenhouse and even then it was kind of dangerous to use outside organic stuff and I am organic I grow everything organic so I try to avoid using any fertilizer indoors now the other thing you don't want to do is limit your lights so now I used what I had I grabbed these LED lights these are not even grow lights but I, I got them and they have some value the grow the LED grow lights are great they've got red and blue different spectrums to grow the plants according to the, the proper sunlight. These are not even that. These are just regular LEDs, but they do have a little value. I put them almost touching. In fact, some of them are even touching. LEDs are not going to burn. If you're going to grow an artificial light, you want to leave the lighting on 24 hours a day and almost touching the plants, if it's, especially if it's LED and it's not going to burn. So I've only planted, uh, I planted less tomatoes in here on the same day and these are nice and stocky look at these guys these are turning out really well so because and the reason is because they have enough space these don't even need to get potted up probably I could probably leave these in here until they're ready to plant because they have enough space the other thing is too I'm in a sunroom this is an unheated sun porch covered sun porch and uh, we do get a southern exposure so we probably get about four hours worth of sun through the window in here which is pretty good, but it's still not the same as outdoor sun. The other thing you want to do is harden them off. To stop them from being leggy is harden them off. So I spoke to you, I gave you the analogy of building the muscles and getting some stress and resistance. On a nice day, bring them outside and let them get real sun and real light. Just don't forget to bring them, bring them in at night because tomatoes just don't like, can't take the cold. But as far as other ones, so I grew a bunch of cabbage and brassicas and Look at them. Here they are here. Here's bok choy. Well, these are going to be um, greens just for our... These are going to be salad greens now because I let them go too long. These two. This is uh, Asian greens and they got too long and leggy. They're growing and they're healthy and we'll use, we'll use them as salad greens. But what I needed to do with all of them is this. I took these um, collards, which are in the brassica family, and I potted them up into a deep cell tray about two weeks ago. And these are living outdoors. By the way, brassicas have antifreeze in their veins. You can plant, you can put these outside. We have these, I just brought these inside for the sake of the videoing, but you could put these outside uh, and they could survive like down to 32 degrees. They've got like antifreeze in their veins. They're meant to, to type, like the cold. In fact, they don't even like growing when it's hot in the summertime. These could actually get in the ground as soon as possible. So when they get a little stronger or bigger, I'm going to plant these right away because they want to get planted right away. Down here in the south, we can plant them in March, no problem, in the ground. So just to summarize, you don't want too much growth inside. You want to give them some resistance by giving them light close by. Uh, don't fertilize them. Don't put a dome on them. Pot them up if they should get out of control, meaning put them in a bigger potting system, deeper. Uh, the goal is to get them outside right away. Uh, and I'm really excited. This is my favorite time of year when the new life is coming out of the seeds. And it's amazing what God could put in the DNA of a seed that can grow into a beautiful... One seed can produce, like it says in the Bible, a mustard seed can produce grow and be so big and produce so much. So that's what my plants are going to do too. They're going to grow and produce a lot. I do offer garden coaching online. Uh, message us if you're interested in that. I've been at this for 30 years. And um, if you could use any help with uh, food garden coaching, I've done flower gardening too. Uh, what we'd like to do is here. Write in the comments any questions you might have. Like and subscribe. Or tell us about any future topics. Thank you.